Okay, um, my show is 30 minutes after the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Derek Ramsey. I will be moderating this session. Uh, this, this presentation is Identifying Technical Debt for Remediation and will be presented by Josh Wilson uh, from Longsite. Uh, if everyone can please keep your microphones um, and cameras off during the presentation, unless you would, unless you are speaking, that would be great. If you have any questions uh, during the session, please enter them into the chat. Um, this session is being recorded. It'll be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If anyone has any audio or video issues uh, during this session, feel free to send me a message in the chat, and I will help you with that. Uh, Josh? Can you, can you hear me, Josh? We cannot hear you. Can you I can am you, muted. There we go. All right, that's, that's probably better. Okay. All right, welcome everyone. So this, this conversation is going to focus on the Sakai roadmap for 2024 to 2026. And we're gonna focus in particular on the technical roadmap. So separate from the user experience roadmap, which is a lot about features and capabilities so we're not going to tackle any of that in this conversation, but here we're looking at the technical roadmap and these are really a bunch of either foundational technologies that we might implement or areas of technical debt to remediate. So what I wanted to do is to pose this question to all of you. What is the, how, how can we think about what should we identify as the areas of technical debt that we really ought to remediate starting in 2024 and moving on through 2026. And so I wanna, here's, here's a list of items in what, what I'm calling a technologies and services category and uh, a second UI technical foundation category. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through each of these lists. I want to make sure that we seek clarification where we need to for each of these items so we're all understanding them the way we the way we need to so we all have the same understanding um and then i want to ask for advocacy ask folks to advocate for one or more of these to be a priority and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through a round of voting we'll do that with a pretty simple thumbs up thumbs down exercise in the chat so what I hope to do is to come out of this with the top three items on each list based upon your votes and your, your input. And that will help us prioritize this going into the, the rest of the roadmap conversation. So what we can do is we can take this prioritized list back to the core team meeting in a few weeks and go over it again, get some additional feedback. So we can certainly iterate on this. This is a beginning, not an ending, but this is gonna get us pretty far down the road. So Matt, thank you very much. Matt is, is demoing the, uh, the thumbs up and thumbs down in the chat. So that's terrific. So, so let's, let's do this. Um, before we dive in any questions, comments about the process that I have proposed for us this afternoon. All right, hearing none, let's get started with technologies and services. So, so let's start with uh, the, the first item in this list. So we're gonna go through this list and we're gonna seek clarification, and then we'll make a second pass through this list seeking advocacy, and then we'll do some voting. So open web component strategy. Um, so this is the implementation of the web component strategy that uh, Earl and others have uh, come up with in consultation with lots of people in the Sakai community. So is any clarification needed here? Are there questions that people want to ask that are clarifying about this particular item? Let's see, we've got a few folks typing. So that's actually a good point. So there, there Jordan notes that uh, he'd, he'd be open to some clarification because not everyone has gone through this list before. So um, uh, let's see, Earl, 
Could you, uh, in 60 seconds or less, explain our open web component strategy? Sure, Josh. <clears throat> so this is a, this is going to be an effort to uh, remove the uh, web components that are in Sakai core right now to remove those and put them into a mono repo. Um, this is similar to how um, we had a presentation that was done by Brian Allendyke um, from Penn State that um, uh, this is basically how they deploy their web components to Elms. Um, and, um, um, you know, it allows, it allows the web components themselves to sort of advance at their own pace. And, you know, and then Sakai just uh, brings them in as a live, like we do on hundreds of other lives, right? So that's kind of how Sakai does, you know, would do that. It would just treat them as a live that would get imported and then the web components are then used within Sakai. All right, thanks. Clarifying questions for Earl from anyone? All right, moving on to item number two, caching improvements. Um, let's, let's continue in this vein. Could I get one of the developers in the meeting to give a 60 second clarification of the caching improvements? I think this one's mine again, Josh. <clears throat> so um, this one is uh, the 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 fully the f move fully to ignite cat distributed caching. Um, with this, the caches that are remaining are the eh caches um, that are the application logic caches, um, not the hibernate caches. And uh, this would be an effort to move all of those to. Uh, ignites caching as well. All right, thanks. And then do session and clustering. And then as a follow on, sorry, Josh, as a follow on to that, that's that's part A. Part B would then be to um, move to, um, uh, since we would have a distributed cache um, and everything, you know, is then using it, um, we can then look to moving to automatic um, session transfer to different nodes, or you call it failover to different nodes. It's really not a failover anymore. It's it's because you know it, it can be transferred to any node. The session. So Earl Jordan asks faster loading with the cache changes? Question mark. Um, I don't think it would be anything with faster. Um, that would make it faster. It would just mean like if uh, if some if uh, say you were going to take a node down for maintenance, and then let's say you had two hundred users on that node, they would they would then just migrate to another node, and their session would be un uninterrupted. Any other clarifying questions for Earl about caching improvements? All right, on to unified messaging service. Who's got a 60 second clarifying statement for us on this one? That might possibly be Adrian. Clearly the unified messaging service is 100% clear as is. <laughs> or maybe Adrian is, is AFK for a second. Um, does anyone have, uh, let, so let, let's move on and we'll come back to this one in a minute. Um, so uh, four and five were once linked and now are, are separate, but they're both about standard support. Earl, could you clarify those two for us? Sure. So uh, the the idea is to bring in um, the latest common cartridge support, um, uh, and uh, uh, and make that a uh, uh, you know just just bring in that uh, one dot four uh, common cartridge support that's actually new, and uh, five is to add um, QTI two support to assessments. Um, I know QTI three is also underway, so maybe it would be add 
it might be QTI two slash three, Josh, maybe. Um, and that is uh, to support the, uh, you know, uh, export of, uh, that's the assessment export, um, the QTI assessment export that uh, Samago has. The thing in there is to not confuse common cartridge 1.4 support with the QTI 2 and 3 stuff because common cartridge does not support QTI 2 or 3. Matter of fact, it's only a subset of what was QTI 1 is what common cartridge supports. So it's really doesn't even support uh, QTI 1, really. Is a Earl? Mm hmm is there is there like a, another breakout point on this that is really just sort of completely rationalize how we do common cartridge without sort of adding new yes that's part of this as well you're right right but i i could i i could i could see completely rationalizing our, rationalizing and improving our current support for common cartridge versions that we currently support as a bullet and then you know moving to later versions as two completely different things. And sure. I, I could see that two and three, uh, QTI two, QTI three, CC one four, those were things that might be things that we could say, that I might say, well, you know, we're not seeing these cartridges and we're not seeing QTI two all that much. And those things should be priorities, prioritized as almost new features when we start seeing it in the market. But like fixing our current common cartridge and refactoring it so that it's like completely sane, right? Which it's not, um, you know, I, I, so I think that's a, to me that whenever we talked about common cartridge, I was always talking about like just taking what we got and making it rational, like rational refactoring and rationalizing what we've got before we start going off and building something, you know, new and expansive. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, so it's part of that, Dr. Chuck. I would say it's, um, in response to that, I would say it's, it's, uh, it's about creating a common cartridge um, um, that is almost in some ways would be um, Sakai, uh, isn't, doesn't necessarily have to be like uh, um, Sakai centric or anything like that, right? It's just, it's just creating a common cartridge import export um, um, that can actually support multiple versions of that thing, right? Because we know, as we know, you know, there's common cart, you know, there's there's many ver there's a few versions of common cartridge, and sometimes you know people are publishing, uh, publishers are publishing different, you know, their content in those different versions. So it's important for us to support uh, all the versions of common cartridge. I would say. Um, but at the same time, it's taking what we have, right, and plugging that into this new framework, basically. And then adding the missing versions. Because what I'm doing is I'm kind of mentally at putting, you know, let's just call them Earl months associated with this, right? Well, so I would think that refactoring our current common cartridge is about 1.5 Earl months. Once it, that's it's done, actually, it's actually the current stuff is actually uh, pretty. I think it's easy, so it's not. It's not. It, that. it isn't. It isn't. I mean, we got to do all the extension stuff to make it so that our we can we can export our own stuff into what a expanded cartridge, without mm -hmm. going to a later version of common cartridge. Right. So I, to me, that's the. That is like searing hot as a priority to right. do common cartridge, current common cartridge well and right. and have the code inside of our system be elegant. Right? Yes. yes. And that's neither of these two buttons, as best I can tell. Um that is well for white me, hot it was, it was for me a priority. Of... But common cartridge 1.0 is you know, I don't know. Maybe other people see it, but and, and QTI two and QTI three. Those come in time. They, I mean, yes, yeah, there's every once in a while, some will come across QTI two, but if it's five Earl months to make QTI two work, and we've got like, you know, four requests for it across the entire universe, that's not worth six months of Earl's time. No, and and QTI two and three, that's a Samago thing. 
it's an I know, I know, and that's why it's that's Sango, why I found it in zero months. Right. right. Well, and it's not common cartridge, right? So you know, it, yeah. the idea is to make common cartridge like a you know, make to have a good implementation of common cartridge. Two, two and three to me are new features, not yes, correct. not cleaning up our infrastructure. Mm -mm, it is not. You're absolutely correct in that. Yeah. So guys, I hate to be a big pain, but I, I think we probably sufficiently clarified this. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm trying we haven't to set the direction, right? So let's yeah. uh, let's make sure that we get as much clarified as we possibly can in this session, and, and then we can get as much voted on as we possibly can. So let me propose that we move on. Uh, so Adrian's uh, Adrian's back with Mike. So uh, Adrian. Can you give us some quick clarification on three items that I think are on your tray? Uh, the unified messaging service, the PWA mobile app, and the grading service? Yeah, C can you hear me, everybody? You sound amazing. I, I know, thank you, thank you. You do too, yeah, yeah. always do. Right, okay, so unified messaging um, is uh, basically a strategy to uh, create a single point where tools can uh, send a variety of messages. So they could send an email, they could send a, uh, a browser push notification, they could send an SMS, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? But the idea is to, to move all that logic into a single place in the kernel and extract um, all the kind of email creation code and email template usage from the tools in, into, into that place, right? Um, it's partially done in that I've refactored a lot of the email stuff. I've, I've moved it all into the kernel, the email template services now in the kernel. Uh, we've got like an API now for sending a message, right? So we've, we've abstracted it. It's a message. An email is a message. An SMS is a message, so on and so forth. Uh, this is just pushing this forwards and in, improving the dashboard for students so they can opt in or out of the various message types. Um, number number six is um yeah the pwa right so i mean chuck could talk about this but i'll talk about it um so the idea of this um kind of like initiative it's been done by learning experiences it's a student of dr chucks who's who's working on this he's doing a talk in the lightning talks later if anybody wants to, to catch that um the idea is to create a really simple uh, progressive web app that handles you know and sh and displays notifications from sakai right and then gives you a way of clicking into those and viewing them right so nice and simple you know on your on your mobile phone you'll be able to have a like a red dot on on the sakai icon or something right showing you there's something to to go and view yeah the idea is to keep it nice and simple uh you know do, do an initial proof of concept that has some utility um yeah, that's that's in that's 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 mid progress at the minute. Um, the grading service, um, I've started this and I've refactored all the all the edge services stuff around grading into a single interface and a single implementation. Uh, and I've also done some work on the assignments tool to simplify the way the assignments tool you know shows its options for for um, picking a gradebook item and so on. Um, there's a lot more steps though. Uh, we want to try and extract, you know, final grading logic from the tools and just make those tools use the grading service for their final grades. So I'm not talking about interim calculations. I'm talking about the final grades that go into the grading service. Um, yeah, we want to move the grading logic, uh, any grading logic that's in the tools that can be standardized. It may be usable between tools and it may sit in the tool, right? We want to move that into the grading service. And finally, we want to decouple the grader and have the grader so it's attached to the grading service and we can use the grader to grade other stuff, uh, you know, not just assignments, which is how it currently works. It's, it's, it's a bit coupled to the assignments uh, tool at the moment, right? So we want to decouple that. Uh, that's it. Is that is that all right? Is that useful? Does anyone that. want further clarification? Lightning talk. <laughs> All right, moving on then. Thank you, Adrian, for those three. So uh, the next few items, eight, JPA migration, nine, RSF retirement, 10, velocity upgrade, 11, wicket upgrade. We've talked about those a lot over the years. Um, would anyone like any clarification about any of those? In the, 
the high level view, it seems to me, is that these are uh, these are libraries and frameworks that Sakai uses, and we would want to make sure that we are using the most current version. Earl, how did I do? <laughs> you are doing great. I, right. I would add, but it's not yeah. as simple as just changing the version number. When we put it up, when we when it makes this list, that means that there's knock on. It's not like just changing. There's knock on effects, meaning we got to redo some stuff. Good point. Thank you. And it's an ongoing. It's an ongoing task. That the old yeah, JPA. Uh, forever. Those are forever ending tasks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe It'll one day the powerful. JPA migration will come to an end. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I would just add that the JPI migration um, is, is a personal favorite of mine. And part part of what I wish as we did more JPI migration is that for new developers, um, they need good examples of the right way to do things, right? And so if our code base is littered with the wrong way of doing things and each little kind of sub pattern has to be rethought as the best way to do it in JPA. And so when I'm as a developer who's just doing JPA this past year, you know, I had to go find what I, what was most important was our old site. No, don't look at that. Look at this. Right. And then that thing I was looking at might not be, there might not be the exact pattern that I need, like a query or something. And then I got to go. So I think part of this really makes it so we have better best practice sample code, more best practice sample code to look at so that as new things happen, we don't like write old hibernate stuff and then create more of a legacy of hibernate stuff that we got to drag forward to JPA. Sounds good. All right, moving on. Um, item 12 is the hands-on table replacement. So that's the, the, uh, the library of the powers grade book. Um, does anyone want clarification from Adrian about that? That's come up a bunch of times. Maybe we should have clarification. Um, Adrian, can you say a little bit about hands-on table replacement? Uh, Jordan asks, would gradebook change? Um, no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't be about changing the interface or the functionality in it. Um, it literally, I mean, it's we use a library called hands-on table, yeah, and um, it's it's relicensed it, right? So basically, the the latest and greatest of it it's you know, you've got to pay a license fee right it, you know our usage would not cover the uh, their, their kind of uh, research license that they give out for free yeah so basically it's it'll be a case of looking at alternative uh, front-end table libraries and uh, basically just replacing the functionality so maybe things would improve a little bit right it'd clean up a little bit but we wouldn't you know it's, it's definitely not a case of changing the, uh, the interface or or uh, you know the functionality And as time goes on, one of the problems with the Hanson table stuff is that as um, as time goes on, there's more and more Chrome, uh, you know, warnings where they've deprecated stuff, right? You know, like scroll handles and things like that, that Hanson table does. So there will come a time, there will come a time when it probably just won't work in Chrome, you know. So that, that's that's the worry about it. But I don't think that time's yet. You know, I think I think we've still got you know, probably a year or so, right, before we need to start really worrying about that. But it will, the time will come. Okay, finished. A year. Wow. Okay, I got a couple more gray hairs than I had before. I didn't realize our time was quite that short. Um, okay, so it is one. Well, maybe maybe two years. I'm, I don't know exactly. I put that out of the air, yeah. right? But it will come because Chrome is warning more and more about about these various things that Hanson Table does in its JS, right? And usually you've got to update things when you see Chrome warnings. It's sensible to do that, but we can't because the new versions, you know, were paid for. So yeah, it's it's a question of. Oh, it could last 10 years like RSF has, or it could just break, you know, this year. You never know. And I guess if it breaks this year, you, we could fix it. There's nothing that's preventing us from patching it. We just, you know, yeah. there's there's a risk involved in that because we can't take the code that they've probably patched their code with to fix our code. We have to, like, do it without any knowledge of what they've fixed it with. Yeah, don't look. We can't, we can't yeah. look at what we've done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a risk someone might look and see what they did. 
So a quick, uh, here's a process proposal. I was a little bit overly ambitious to think we could tackle both of these lists in a 30 minute conversation. I don't know what I was thinking or 40 minutes, whatever this is. Um, so what I think we ought to do is let it, let's take off the table, the UI technical foundation list and Earl, if it's okay, maybe I can bring that to a core team meeting in the near future. Of course. So, so let's, let's continue clarifying the technologies and services list. Let's take a few minutes for advocacy and then we'll do some voting and see where that leaves us. So we are up to item 13, content hosting replacement. Chuck, I think this was your suggestion, right? Yes, and you don't need to vote on it because I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> okay, moving right along then. I'm waiting for a whole bunch of things to sort of attack after plus is my secret project, my next secret project of the moment. So that's just... That'll never get done until I get it done because Sam doesn't think it's all that valuable. And so I'll get it done and that'll be that. All right. I, I, I think it's valuable, Dr. Chuck. Good. So you know. that, then that's two to 5,000 because, you know, you and I are one vote and Sam, is right. but no. Sam, Sam will think it's valuable too. Yeah, no, it's good. He'll come around. The place that it's the most valuable is actually in site copy and import and export. So it did, but no need to. It'll be awesome. Importing will be awesome once I get this fixed. All right. On to item 14, which is Growl VM investigation. Can someone clarify? Yeah, that's really uh, Chuck wishing that Growl would save us memory. It's kind of a, go, it really is a tuning thing like Earl talked about this morning. So don't, I think we should uh, take that out. I, I, I think that we'll get great performance other ways than Grawl. And Grawl may not be the, I mean, it, it might, but it's it's not, I don't think it's the right uh, to, to, I call that out as a thing we got to collectively do. I don't think it's, I think we just take that off the list. Okay. It's a future Last thing item on that, the list then. That would be good uh, to have. <laughs> Sorry. Nope, no, no worries. What I, I wanted to do was look at the all three compilation, right? That's what I was hoping we could use. And at some point, we'll, if that if that starts to work, we'll jump on it. But it's not like we can make that work faster. So last item, JDK 17 upgrade, which uh, we had said earliest was Sakai 24 last year. Can someone uh, give a quick clarification statement for that? Uh, yep, I think that's still on target for 24. Um, uh, there will be, it is required for spring six. So going to spring six will require JDK 17. So there is a requirement there. Okay. All right. That gets us through this first pass through the list. So here's what I propose. I propose we, t we take a certain amount of time. I'm going to propose that, that we take until 205, not to exceed for advocacy. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. And then we will vote. And that should take us up to 210, which is the end of this session. We'll end hopefully as close to on time as possible and then move on to uh, the next round of lightning talks, which will be at 220, I believe. Yes, 220. All right, so so it's, it's 1.58 p.m. Eastern, two minutes before the top of the hour. I, I propose we go until five minutes past the top of the hour for advocacy. And here's, here's what I suggest. Um, I want to open the floor to anyone who would like to advocate for one item on this list as being much more important than the rest. Uh, so here, here's your opportunity to persuade us when it comes time for voting that this one thing for which you're advocating should be in an individual's top three list. So who would like to advocate? There's a whole lot of typing going on. You're welcome to advocate in chat. You're welcome to unmute yourself and advocate verbally. And Chuck says, how about, Chuck, how about uh, Earl and Adrian not advocate? Let's hear other voices. I'm, I'm definitely there for that. So, the floor is yours. Who would like to advocate for any of these?
Jordan's advocating for caching improvements. Bunch of people are typing. Earl and Adrian, I thought you guys weren't supposed to advocate. Jordan wants to advocate for more unified messaging. Yes, this that that was the vision we've had for it for a while. Um, does anyone else want to advocate uh, additionally for either caching or messaging? Harold advocates for caching. Sean advocates for the hands-on table replacement for gradebook. Jack agrees with Jordan advocating for caching. Certainly we've seen that from a long site perspective, you know, as much as we can do to, to limit downtime, there's still, you know, restarts still end sessions. Sean's, uh, Sean says caching is your number two pick. So Sean, you're advocating for gradebook before a bunch of these other things and caching number two, is that what I'm hearing? Angelia says caching then gradebook. Sean, yep, so gradebook then caching. Okay, interesting. Anyone that hasn't spoken, would, any, would anyone that hasn't spoken wanna advocate for anything else on this list? Something that you think is really, really critical? Ought to go on everyone's top three list? I mean, I wonder about the early weeks or early months estimates too that Dr. Chuck says some of these may be really easy and some of these may be a lot more effort. I don't really know personally the effort for some of these. I feel like the last one there, the JDQ 17, is something that we really should try to push for for the 24 release. And that may be, may be really easy, but I've not tried it. And maybe it's hard, but it just seems like it would be easy. I don't know what's, what the blocker of that is though. But uh, you know, JDK eleven goes out of support next year, or so. Um, yeah, I don't think it was like um a big, a big hurdle. I don't think it's at all like a hurdle. Mm -hmm. I think it was just we wanted to get two years on eleven. Um, be um because when we move to seventeen, um, we want to be able to bump the um, uh, the language level to eleven, right? So. So we're, we've been running on 11. Language level is copper. We, uh, language level has been at, at Java 8 still, right? And, you know, because we have to be able to backport a lot of these fixes back to Sakai 21, right? Which is still running Java 8, right? And it's still a supported version of Sakai. However, now that 23 is in the... Is in the uh, you know, going to be released here short uh, in the next uh, six months or so. Um, it's, uh, um, you know, we're looking at now um, that um, uh, Java 11 will be supported on 22 and 23. So that's the two versions. And now we can now take a step up to JDK 17 and bump our language level to 11. I thought 11 was supported. Um much earlier than that, like back to at least 20, but uh, maybe not. Not as far as, because we had the backport stuff. So you can't mm. really, you know, we don't want to include language level things that you can't, you know, that you can't back, that you can't run on the um, old JDKs, right? So, you, but we would like support it and run under it, but you just can't use the features of it. Is this like the, some kind of transition time or are you planning on like cutting it It's a transition it time. Yeah, it was purely a transition time. Yeah, mm -hmm. in that you're absolutely 100% right. Okay. Yep, just the transition period. That's all it is. And now we've done it. We're like there now. <laughs> so 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 24 could be, you know, JDK 17 and it actually lines up right because spring 6 is uh, did it come out yet? Is it supposed to be out this month, November. So spring 6 comes out this this month. This gives us a time to, you know, get ready for spring six coming up. Right, and that's Java 17. And that requires yeah, yeah. JDK 17. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah. 
Okay. So, so it is 2.05 p.m. 2.05 p.m. Eastern. So we've got five minutes left in this session. I'm, I'm ending the period for advocacy. Um, Matt, I, I do take your point about easy and hard. And I think uh, for, for, to make the conversation a little bit more streamlined, we've taken the approach, at least last year anyway, and that seemed to work out okay, that we would order things in terms of how uh, much we needed them, you know, what their priority is, and then uh, work down the list from top to bottom. And that meant that if there were opportunistic things that could be accomplished in time that we had left, that wouldn't prevent us from doing that. I think it's also easy, hard, and fun or enjoyable. <laughs> Yes, I, I, yes, I feel, exactly. like they, I feel like they this QTI thing is it's not going to be enjoyable. Maybe there's somebody who really loves XML and specifications and implementation, but I don't know. That would be like, that would rank really low on the enjoyability level for me. Yeah. <laughs> Plus Samago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like eating broken glass. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a very quick pass through this list. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to ask for thumbs up for each item. So think about your top three. Um, actually, no, hold on a second. So there, there are 15. Uh, each of you gets five votes, five votes. Uh, so we'll do this on the honor system. So you can give a thumbs up or a plus one in the chat to five things. Uh, you can feel free to give multiple votes to one thing if you would like to. You're welcome to spend your votes that way. So uh, and so I'll, I'll total these up and I'll add comments in the document with the number of thumbs up for each one. So here we go. Open web component strategy. How many thumbs up do we have for open web component strategy? One from Earl, one from Jack, one from Anu, that's three. Any others? Adrian better be putting a plus one in there. <laughs> there it is. Yep, plus one from Adrian. Any other <laughs> thumbs up for open web component <laughs> strategy? I thought we weren't supposed to vote anyway. No, no, you're, you're supposed to vote. You weren't supposed to advocate. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Okay. Plus four for open web component strategy. So um, anyone who wants to add a plus one to this document later on, you can feel free to. You can just tag on to one of the comments. All right. Caching improvements. Who's got a thumbs up for caching improvements? So starting with uh, so Dr. Chuck, your thumbs up was for web components. And no, so starting no, no caching. It was it was for caching. Okay. Caching. All right. So for caching, we have one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Plus seventeen for caching. That's what I see. And it's good that Earl said plus one because we know who's going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. How many thumbs did you say we had? <laughs> um, you know, you, you've got 17, apparently, Matt. <laughs> nice. All right. Moving on to unified messaging service. So don't put your plus one in yet. <laughs> All right. So unified messaging service. Who's got a thumbs up for unified messaging service? All right. One, two, three. 17 for Matt, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now that Jack has seen the way the sausage making happens in this place, he may never come back. All right, so I have uh, I have 11 thumbs up. Uh, Matt, are you, are you giving me one or two here? Or, or are you up to five, I guess, depending on what you've, you've done? I thought I've only, I thought this is the second one. I think this is only my second. Oh, okay. Got it. He's only spending one. He's just doing it with emphasis. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. So I, so I, I'm, I'm going to call this plus 10 and I will, I will look at the chat afterward and hope, hope that I got this right, but we're definitely close. All right. Common cartridge 1.4 support. How many thumbs up for common cartridge 1.4 support? One for Martin, one for Chuck. Uh, Chuck is like one for common cartridge, nothing for 1.4. Okay, fair point. Um, we'll combine those for now, but I, I take your point about those being separate items. Thus far, two for common cartridge support. Any others? Well, 1.4 isn't even released as a final spec yet, so um, 
I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna give it zero too. And it's good to work toward it, but so it is two ten, and I anyone who knows me knows that I'm pretty. Uh, maniacal about ending on time. So here's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to put in the chat the link to this document. So I would invite you to comment in this document, add any plus ones in comments to any of the items in the technologies and services list. So remember, you have up to five thumbs to give. So um, we'll, have to, we'll have to close this out now, but starting with QTI2, feel free to comment in this document, add your plus ones, and I will tally them all up in the document. So thanks all for a really good conversation. Sorry we didn't get all the way through this, but I, I am glad that we got through clarification. You know, that means that you guys can put your thumbs up in the mix here. And uh, I will report back at a future core team meeting about the, uh, the, the tallied thumbs up for technologies and services. And we'll have a, a full conversation along these lines for the UI technical foundation items. Um, all right. It is 2.11 p.m. We have about nine minutes until what comes next, which is Lightning Talks round three, starting at 2.20 and continuing until 3.10 p.m. Eastern. Um, any final comments before we close out this session? Good job as usual, Josh. Thanks. All right, gang, thanks so much. We will see you in the next session in nine short minutes. All right, take care, everyone.